How could I forget some Thanksgiving activities? Of course not, right? We do educational activities on this channel, so I wanted to show you some fun things that you could do with just a package of feathers. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet. Around this channel, you need to subscribe. We do educational activities for kids, ideas, and inspirations to learn through play. And most recently, I went to Walmart. And at Walmart, I found one of my favorite things around this time of year, a bag of colored feathers. Really simple, really affordable, really great for on a budget learning. So I want to show you some activities that you could do with feathers with your kids around this Thanksgiving season. I also don't want to forget that I need to announce the giveaway winner for the Plus Plus Blocks. I feature these in a restaurant kit video, and you guys were thrilled about them and so are we we've been playing with them like every time we go out to a restaurant so if you see your name here you have one congratulations you have 72 hours to respond to claim your prize and I have some giveaways going on right now a holiday gift guide that I started and it's filled 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 with all kinds of fun things that you might want to keep your eye on for your Christmas list or you could try and win it so make sure to go back all the giveaways are open to the end of Thanksgiving so you can still register there's still time go back and watch that after you watch this video and don't forget I'm also gonna have some giveaways coming up here in the next couple of days so that's another reason to subscribe so for these activities I'm gonna mention kind of the materials I'm using as I go along I got these packages of feathers from Walmart um, this one has 40 in the pack this one is just a little bit different style a little fluffier they also come in all sorts of different colors individually you can get them at Walmart and I've also seen them at Dollar Tree I think it goes without saying that you could do really simple color sorting with these counting with these I mean that's pretty self-explanatory when you sort all the different colors but for our purposes I am just going to skip the easy activities I might mention a couple of ideas here and there and I'm just gonna take a couple of these maybe just one set of the rainbow and then maybe a tray of some sort this one came from Dollar Tree you don't have to have a tray you guys I mean it's really really not necessary you can just put it on the table Table, but I like to put mine on tray. So I have some dough here. I don't have any brown dough. I didn't make this myself. So I have some yellow dough, which is gonna be totally fine. I'm gonna add my feathers to my tray and some Google eyes. Dollar Tree has a lot of fun googly eyes that I've collected over the years. So I'm gonna put those in there. And then I'm gonna use some craft foam. This came from Dollar Tree too to cut out some other parts for the turkey. And if you couldn't guess it already, this is a fine motor sensory tray for making a turkey. This is the turkey's body that you would roll up into a ball, probably much better than I am. You can add on your turkey parts and then of course your feathers. Now for your little ones, if you wanna make this a little bit more educational, you can add in numbers and this is the number of feathers that they would put in. And so the older kids for their feathers, they can do a math problem instead. Here's a simple addition one, three plus two, and they would put that many feathers onto their little dough turkey. And one more variation for the older kids as well. You could create one turkey and have them copy depending on the different parts and feathers you have. So just duplicate what you have just a variation on it to mix it up lots of fine motor activities you can do with this this is a tray with some beads bead tray they're all from Dollar Tree so you can get this really affordably they also have these pony beads at Walmart if you're interested and what this is is it's just threading the beads onto the feathers which is a great fine motor exercise and it does take a little bit of effort to put them on there but once you get them on you have colors that match each feather this is another opportunity where you can bring in numbers and do math problems if you want or you could just keep it a fine motor activity and threading on the beads. If you don't have beads, another option would be buttons that have large holes on them, which I don't have right now because these are the only buttons I have, but you might already have some around your house that have a little bit bigger holes that the feathers could be threaded on. I wanted to give you some options because it's important for me to encourage you guys to use things that you already have at your house. The package of fluffier feathers are perfect for a sensory bin just because they are soft and really fun to touch and they're not as um, stiff as these ones right here and the fluffy ones you just know they're fluffy because the feathers on the side are quite different than the other ones as you can see and you can make it into a sensory bin and just have it for something fun to touch or you can hide things inside of their sensory bin I'm just using a container here but most sensory bins are a little bit deeper like a shoebox size this is a perfect activity for your uh, toddlers when supervised and your preschoolers however if you would like to make this more of an older activity go ahead and combine it with a fine motor tool like these tweezers that I have here and now it's picking up the feathers and putting them inside the bin this is also a great thing if you have kids of different ages maybe
maybe the older child can be able to put these inside there. If you don't have a pair of tweezers, this is from a learning resources set that I just love. I'll put that in my Amazon store with a link down below because it comes with a whole set of different tools that you could use and this is just one of them. But if you don't have tweezers like this, like the giant tweezers that are made for kids, another option would be to use a clothespin because what you're wanting to do is have the child use that pincer grasp so that they increase their fine motor skills. That's the whole purpose of this. And so it's important to do activities like this to strengthen those muscles in the hands so that, see I'm even having a hard time here, <laughs> so that they are prepared for when they have to do writing. So this is the purpose of doing fine motor is preparation for actual writing skills. And then if this big clothespin becomes too easy, you might want to graduate to a smaller clothespin. And once again, when you have small crayons that are broken or small writing instruments like this, it's just another way to really emphasize those muscles that you need to write. So that's just one variation on this that you can make it a little bit more difficult using the different tools. Another addition to this would be to add a timer. If you have a timer to see how many you can pick up in a certain amount of time, or even make it a relay who could pick up the feathers the quickest. I'm actually having quite fun with this. It's a little therapeutic. If you have a turkey baster that's not being used when you're creating Thanksgiving turkey, Turkey. I'm taking a feather and a turkey baster. This is actually one from that set that I mentioned that I love. It, we use it in our water play, but still when you pump the, the little bulb here, it squirts out air. You could have relays of pushing your feather across the floor or the table. You could do it yourself. See how many squirts it takes you or how many pushes it takes you to get that feather across. But this is also helping to work that fine motor grasp with when you do the pumps. A little bit of control when you're trying to push them across and then if you add in the relay or a timer option it becomes a really fun game. Something as simple as a straw can also have the same kind of effect as the baster. So you basically, let me get a feather here that's a different color. Oh that's green. How about bright pink? Um, this one is a lot of fun because you can stuff it in one end. Not all the way though but just enough that you could blow that feather out for some effect. Watch this. Hopefully I can get this on camera. <laughs> so those are feather shooters with the straw and it's a really fun simple thing I guarantee you if you did this your kids are gonna be entertained for quite a while blowing that out which is also great for speech development and working those mouth muscles when you're blowing through that straw at Dollar Tree you can get a whole bunch of contact sticky paper it comes in a huge roll like this and I promise you it'll go a long way this activity is best put up on a window and working kind of or on a window or a wall. But for our sake, I'm just gonna cut out some. One side is sticky and one side is not. So you just peel off the backing. It's just a clear piece of paper. And then you could tape it onto your window. I'm just gonna set it down here on my board. And then you have an opportunity to place your feathers right on top and make a feather collage. The kids really do like this, especially because these feathers, they can come right off and be repositioned again. So this was a sticky paper collage, best one used on a wall and you can leave it up all of the holiday season and, and be reminded of your turkeys. If you wanted to get super crafty, you could even make a turkey shape and then have your feathers coming out of the turkey shape and kind of creating your own turkey. Even the googly eyes will stick on there too. I also wanted to point out a couple of printables that I found. I found one that is perfect. It's free. You can go check it out. I'm going to put the link down below in the description box, but it shows you the parts of the feather so you can do a deeper investigation on the feather and really make this an educational kind of thing. And you can cut out and label and draw your your own feather. So I highly recommend checking out that one. There's also a Montessori three-part card printable that I found. It's just a couple of dollars to buy it and it goes over the different types of feathers. So which birds have which kind of feathers. This is a perfect activity for probably your preschool to kindergartner. And if you don't know how to use the three-part cards, I will put a link to that. I have a whole tutorial on how to use three-part cards. I hope you've been inspired to do some activities with your kids with some really simple package of feathers. It's a really fun and easy way to do some Thanksgiving themed kind of learning. Make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.